So hello everyone, myself Dr. Karthik Digutla and in today's OT clinic session, we'll be talking about Bain circuit. We all know that Bain circuit is a modification of Mapleson D circuit, which is a semi-open or semi-closed circuit. So without wasting much time, we'll get started. So Bain circuit, Mapleson D, you know that Bain circuit is a modification of Mapleson D. So Mapleson D is the most efficient of the Mapleson's breathing systems during a controlled ventilation, during a controlled ventilation. So it was after the second world war, uh, 1972, during that time, the Bain streamlined anesthetic breathing system was described by two people, they are Bain and Sporel. Okay. So the Bain circuit comprises of a semi-open circuit, we all know. It is a 1.8 meter length or 180 centimeters in length. It is a lightweight, portable, conductive, corrugated plastic tubing with 22 meter 22 mm diameter of a outer tube which is corrugated transparent outer tube and also it has a small bore 7 millimeter diameter inner tube okay inner tube which delivers the fresh gas flow from the anesthetic machine to the patient okay so the Bain system has been advocated as a universal anesthesia system or a universal circuit because it can be used in both spontaneous as well as controlled ventilation, both spontaneous and controlled ventilation. So it is called a universal circuit. Now, what is the configuration of the classic Mapleson D? The fresh gas flow inlet is present near the patient's end. Okay. The reservoir bag and the APL valve are distal to the patient's end or the TP cell. So it has a corrugated tubing connecting the patient end and the reservoir bag. So the fresh gas flow is near the patient's end and the APL valve and the reservoir bag is at the distal to the patient's end in the uh, classic Mapleson D circuit. When we talk about the Bain's modification of the Mapleson D, so in this modification, what did Bain's do? The fresh gas supply tube, which is the inner tube, he made it to run coaxially, that is tube within a tube model. So outside there is an outer tube, then there is an inner tube, which is going through the outer tube so it runs coaxially inside that corrugated tubing and inside the point where the fresh gas would enter in the classic Mapleson D okay now in this picture you can see that there is a TP uh, T piece at the patient's end this is the patient's end the second picture will show that it has an outer tube which has a inner tube inside it which is running coaxially and also you can see in the third picture there is a reservoir bag there is a small white color valve which is known as APL valve or the adjustable pressure limiting valve and there is an inner tube which is coming out of that corrugated tube above the APL valve which is the fresh gas flow inlet which is the fresh gas flow now what is the benefit of making it coaxial why did Bain want to uh, make a modification of the Mapleson D because it provides a self-contained thermally efficient atmosphere where the inspired gases are naturally warmed and humidified okay the inspired gases the fresh gas flow they are humidified by the uh, expired gases of the patient from outer tube towards the inner tube so there is a natural humidification and warming of the gases because coal gases are always irritant for the airway in the picture, you can see that there is a heat transfer from the gases of the outer tube to the inner tube. And you can see the fresh gas flow flow and the expired gases flow are in opposite direction. Now the tube within a tube design also eliminates twisting between the inspiratory and expiratory limb. Obviously, like the BP cable and the ECG cable gets inter intertwined and you have to separate them. In the same way, when there are two or more limbs, like an inspiratory limb, expiratory limb, there is always a chance of disconnection, kinking, there is a chance of twisting. Okay, these are also eliminated by a tube within a tube model. Now the outer tube is clear or transparent so that the inner tube can be inspected well for any damage or presence of any holes or leaks. So Bain and Sporel complained that there were too many heavy tubes dragging all around the place. So the Bain's modification puts tube into the tube to minimize the tubing and the connections. All right. Now, how do you use this Bain circuit? You can use it for spontaneous respiration as well as for controlled ventilation. Now moving on to spontaneous ventilation. In the spontaneous, during the spontaneous ventilation, when the patient is able to breathe, breathe by himself, then the APL valve is left open and the excess gases are vented out during the expiration by the patient himself. Okay, you are not doing any squeezing of the bag. The expiratory, expired gases are going by themselves through the outlet of the APL valve. 
Now, what is the functional analysis of brain circuit during a spontaneous respiration? During inspiration, during expiration, and the third is during an expiratory pause. Three things we have to write for any functional analysis of any circuit. So during inspiration, what is happening? The patient will inhale the gases from the fresh gas inlet and the corrugated tubing. Okay. If the fresh gas flow is high, all the gases drawn from the corrugated tube will be fresh gas. Okay. Simple. There is an inner tube which is getting the fresh gas flow from the anesthesia machine to the patient. Okay. There is a corrugated tube when the patient expires. These expired gases are going through the corrugated tube and some gas is going into the reservoir bag and some gases, most of the gas is uh, expelled out through the APL valve. Okay. Now when the fresh gas flow is very high, then they will push all the, all the expired gases in the corrugated tube through the APL valve to the outside atmosphere. But if the fresh gas flow is less, only few of the expired gases of the corrugated tube are expelled out and some gases of the expired gases in the corrugated tube are still there because the fresh gas flow is very low from the inner tube. So there is no driving force for the expired gases to go out because fresh gas flow is less. So it will depend upon the, the rebreathing. What is rebreathing? Expired gases are again uh, inspired by the patient. The expired carbon dioxide is again inspired by the patient, which is called as rebreathing. So this rebreathing depends upon the flow of the fresh gas flow. If the fresh gas flow is high, there is less rebreathing. And if the fresh gas flow is low, then there will be more rebreathing of the expired gases. Okay. Now during exhalation, what is happening? The exhaled gases will mix with the fresh gases and move through the corrugated tubes towards the reservoir bag. And after the bag has filled, the gas exists via APL valve, via the APL valve. Now during an inspiratory pause, because each expression is not immediately followed by an inspiration, there is a small expiratory pause in spontaneous breathing. So during that expiratory pause, the fresh gas pushed, pushes the exhaled gases down the corrugated tubing, like I said before. So the fresh gas flow is going to push the expired gases through the APL valve. All right. Now the recommendation for the fresh gas flow based on the body weight will vary from 100 to 300 ml per kg per minute to maintain the normal carbia. So it is more, the more tidal volume. If it is one time for during the normal, like minute ventilation is one, it will require more than one, like 1.5 to three times. Okay. So most studies have recommended that the fresh gas flow will be 1.5 to three times the minute volume. What is minute volume? It is respiratory rate times the tidal volume. So normal respiratory rate considering it as 12 to 16 breaths per minute. So during spontaneous breathing, the Mepulsan D or Bain circuit will require 1.5 to 3 times. It requires more uh, minute ventilation, more volume of the fresh gas flow. That is why it is not economical in the spontaneous breathing. So why it is requiring more times than the other circuits during the spontaneous breathing? Because to expel out the expired gases, it is requiring more fresh gas flow. That is why it is requiring more times a minute ventilation, 1.5 to 3 times more. And also to prevent the rebreathing also, we have to give high fresh gas flow. Okay, these are the reasons why it is requiring a high fresh gas flow. That is why it is avoided in spontaneous breathing, not the circuit of choice. When it comes to controlled ventilation, it is the circuit of choice. We'll see why. So during expiration, what is happening? The gases flow from the patient down the corrugated tubing. At the same time, the fresh gas enters the inner tubing. See, in controlled or spontaneous ventilation, there is a flow from the machine to the patient throughout the surgery. Through as, as long as oxygen is connected, there is a continuous flow of the inspired gases that is oxygen in the inner tube to the patient. There is a continuous flow. But the, during only expiration, the expired gases are presented in the corrugated tube. Okay. Now there is an expiratory pause after the expiration. You are not giving back. You are giving only 12 to 14 minutes per minute. So definitely there is an expiratory pause in between. During that time what happens? This fresh gas flow will con continue from the inner tube and this will push again the exhaled gases in the outer tube to the reservoir bag and some gases through the APL valve. Okay. Now during inspiration what is happening? When you squeeze the bag, because it is a controlled ventilation, you have to squeeze the bag to make the person 
inhale some oxygen so when you are squeezing the bag the fresh gas and also the gases from the corrugated tube will also enter the patient which is rebreathing again so gas in the inner tube are however going now when you squeeze it the expired gases in the reservoir bag and also the corrugated tubing are entering into the patient if the fresh gas flow is low some exhaled gases may be inhaled which is called as rebreathing now factors that will increase rebreathing now why there is this rebreathing there is a prolonged inspiratory time you are giving a prolonged inspiratory time and you are giving a less expiratory time so there is less time for the expired gases to vent out okay if the inspiratory time is more expiratory time is less more carbon dioxide is staying over there and it is not getting expelled out so there is rebreathing of the carbon dioxide and if there is an increased respiratory rate you are not allowing the carbon dioxide to expel out because the respiration is not complete the expiration is not complete the expiratory time is limited when respiratory rate is more so that is why rebreathing is happening and also adding is the inspiratory plateau there is an increase in inspiratory plateau then also again there is rebreathing so the rebreathing can be decreased by allowing a long expiratory pause so that the fresh gas flow can flush out the exhaled gases from the corrugated tubing so okay the concept is very clear the higher the fresh gas flow the lower the entidal carbon dioxide so when the fresh gas flow is high there is little rebreathing because the expired gases are expelled out and also the entidal carbon dioxide or etco2 is determined mainly by the minute ventilation in this scenario now when the minute volume substantially exceeds the fresh gas flow if the minute volume is more than fresh gas flow during that time the fresh gas flow is the main factor which is controlling the etco2 or carbon dioxide elimination okay i hope this is clear now what are the recommendation during controlled ventilation based on the body weight it is 70 to 100 ml per kg per minute to maintain normal normocarbia so that is the reason which is the normal minute volume or normal required for the minute ventilation of a adult 70 kg person so the controlled ventilation definitely bain circuit is the circuit of choice because there is no wastage of fresh gas flow there is less requirement of the fresh gas flow it is more economical all right so preferred circuit is bain circuit for controlled ventilation also hyperventilation during the controlled ventilation can lead to hypocapnia we know that hyperventil hyperventilation will cause decreased etco2 which may lead to a reduction in the cardiac output and also shift in the oxygen dissociation curve to the left which will definitely reduce the oxygen extraction ratio and a delay in the return of the spontaneous respiration at the end of anesthesia all these will happen okay in situations where the anesthesia machine need to be at a greater distance than usual from the patient like neuro radiology suits or mri suits or angiography with a moving table there is a double and 3.6 meter bain system which was also used previously so which was made by appropriately joining two circuits together examination of the results for the patients anesthetized with the double lens system shows no significant difference from the normal system even if you observe in the recent times during the covid times also the bain circuit modifications there are multiple modifications for the bain circuit there is one more modification where there are two limbs for the brain bain circuit and one limb is the expiratory separate limb which is connected directly to the anesthesia machine okay that limb will also scavenge the expired gases normally the expired gases are given to the expelled or vented out to the through the apl valve into the atmosphere which is causing ot pollution but in this double length one the the expiratory limb is directly connected to the anesthesia machine where there is a scavenging system it is going to pull out all the expiratory gases okay so there is no ot pollution that is also is present it is almost like a circle system okay and also during the recent covid times also you have observed that uh, the bain circuit can be connected to a uh, bipap machine or a cpap mask and it can provide a positive expiratory pressure it can provide a peep or continuous positive airway pressure also can be provided using the bain circuit now what are the pre use checks this is very important so bain circuit must be tested for leaks before every use so how you can check the first one is general inspection then there is a test for the outer tube which is positive pressure test there is a test for the inner tube which is inner tube occlusion test and also one more test which is pethic test so let us demonstrate how you can do these tests in the operating theater so firstly we are going to do general inspection of the outer tube inner tube the apl valve and the reservoir bag 
look for any damage kinking or any presence of holes in the outer tube and inner tube and also check for the connections of the reservoir bag and the apl valve and also connection of the outer tube and the tps near the patient's end rotate the apl valve and check for any connection or disconnection problems also check the inner tube thoroughly the positive pressure leak test is done to check the patency of the outer tube and the apl valve so you are closing the outer tube with the thumb then you are going to close the apl valve completely then inflate the bag using the fresh gas flow or oxygen flush wait for 15 to 20 seconds and look for any leaks in the outer tube or the reservoir bag this will show the patency of the outer tube and reservoir bag Now if you want to check the APL valve just open the APL valve and see that the bag deflates Now let us perform the inner tube occlusion test or the bobbin dip test so you can see the inner tube inside the outer tube so the fresh gas flow is started you can keep from 2 to 4 liters okay we are starting the fresh gas flow Now take the plunger of a 5 ml syringe and insert it into the in outer tube and close the inner tube using that. Now take a closer look at the flow meter bobbin. Now whenever you press the inner tube using the plunger or close the inner tube, you can see there is a dip in the level of the bobbin due to back pressure. And now let us perform pathix test. you will occlude the patient's end and close the apl valve then fill the circuit using the oxygen flush and fill the reservoir you kept the outer tube closed using your thumb now release the occlusion and press the oxygen flush due to venturi effect the bag deflates all right now let us end this topic by knowing some advantages and disadvantage of the bain circuit or in that case mebel sun d circuit okay so what are the advantages it is lightweight definitely portable it is transparent it is used during both spontaneous and controlled ventilations it can be used at remote locations like mri suites and angiography suites and the exhaled gases do not accumulate near the surgical field so risk of flash fires is abolished unlike the mapelson a circuit in the mapelson a circuit the apl valve is near the patient's end so whenever the patient expires the through the apl valve these uh, gases can come with and sometimes can be uh, combustible and can cause flash fires then there is a minimal drag on the et tube as compared to the megel circuit where more weight is towards the patient and like i said the valve and all is present near the patient's end in mapelson a and also the transparent outer tube enables easy detection of any kinking or disconnection of the inner fresh gas flow tube okay now what are the disadvantages of bain circuit there is definitely a risk of connection because in the bain circuit there is a connection between the apl valve and reservoir bag then between the apl valve and the outer tube there is a connection and between the outer tube and the patient's tps and the mask or et tube is also so there are multiple connections and there is a possibility of disconnection anywhere in between and also there is a lot of kinking can occur okay at the patient's end or the machine's end which can all in lead in inadvertently to hypoxia then there is theater pollution because there is no proper scavenging system available and needs higher fresh gas flows compared to the closed circuit definitely mainly used only for adults more than 20 kg we are, we know that less than 6 years and less than 20 kg due to that dead space thing or the resistance offered by the circuit in the children jackson reef circuit which is a modified irtp is is definitely the circuit of choice in children okay so i hope this session was helpful if you like the video do press the like button and also comment uh, how you are liking these videos and um, do share it with your friends and colleagues thank you and see you in the next oti clinic session